10. We'll start at 35. And I guess we can get Sister Butler in the back and let her start. We'll go crisscross all the way up. One verse each till we get to 37. Again, that's Luke 10, 25 through 37. Just then, an expert in the law stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, you want to read 26? I mean, uh, yeah, 26. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thou neighbor as thyself. Thank you. 37? 28. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Twenty-nine. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Thirty. Jesus replied with the story. A Jewish man, Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. Thirty-one. A priest happened to be going down the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite when he arrived at the place, wait a minute, that's not right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible. Uh -oh. 32. 32. Oh, 32. Did, did I go yeah, you, you crossed lanes. You know what? I was, too, I was joking. I'm sorry. I do apologize. All right. All right. Take your time. Okay, where am I at now? Verse 32 <laughs> of the 10th chapter of Luke. 10.32. Okay, let me go back over to the next page. I do apologize. Okay, a priest happened to be going down the road when he saw him. He passed by on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's good. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and saw him pass by on the other side. It's 32. Yeah, they had you read two, but that's all right. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> but a Samaritan who was traveling came upon him, and when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion. Wonderful. And he went to him and bound up his wound, pouring on, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animals and brought him to any end and, and took care of him. Amen. And tomorrow he went, and tomorrow he departed. He took out two pieces, two pieces, and gave it to the host. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, "Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, and I will repay thee." Wonderful. 
36. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The good Samaritan. 37. The, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. All right. Let me say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And so today we're going to talk about something that's very important to us all, and that's sharing our faith uh, and also loving our neighbors. Yeah. And we live in, in, in such a time where people look at that command to love our neighbor as a small thing, but it's major. It's major, and you can't revoke what God has commanded. Amen. And so today we want to look at what that requires. Number one, to love our neighbor requires a compassionate heart. Yes. And a compassionate heart gives us understanding. This is real important here. The Bible speaks about this in James the first chapter, verse 27, says religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And so compassionate is what we need in our hearts. And this is so important. I was today at the car wash, me and Jojo, and I, the guy that was the car wash attendant, I look, he was gone, and he was down the way helping two ladies change their tire. Uh -huh. And I was like, man, it's good to see people doing good in the airport. But, you know, to be selfish, you ain't gonna care about what somebody else is going through. And so let's look at that. A compassionate heart is two things. Gives us motivation. It, it motivates you when you have a compassionate heart. And, and this is something that's so important for us in dealing with sharing our faith. We got to understand that some people that we encounter are not there yet. That's right. They have not made it there. And that's why you and me, who sit in these sacred walls of our Father's house, should understand that God has blessed us and elevated us by allowing us to go through processes and become taught and to gather understanding and wisdom from heaven so we can apply it in our life and help others as well. Let's look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. It says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. This, this, this is what Jesus did. And so he said, greater works than these shall thy do. And so when you think about, you know, uh, 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 compassion, how having that type of heart gives us understanding where we can relate, we can, we can gather. When we see a, 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 a fast woman or a whoremonged man, and we come out of that. Yeah, come on now. We, we, were, we grew up in a time where the songs was doing the butt, <laughs> you know, butt dancing. It really is nothing new under the sun. Come on, Roger Trotman, nothing but the dog in me. You know, all these things, you know, we grew up on. Yeah. You know, and then the older people, they had what we call belly rubbing dances. Okay. <laughs> Back in Motown, Smokey Bill Robinson. <laughs> you know, and so a lot of fights kicked out when me and seeing a woman dancing close like that. Yeah. And so these are things that we come out of, and so we can have compassion because God had mercy on our soul. And so this is, this, is, this is important here. And so, you know, a, a, a compassionate heart not only gives us understanding, but gives us motivation. Helps us to be motivated. Because guess what? We know that the Lord did these things. 
When you think about somebody being sick, that's not a good thing. That's not a comfortable thing. That is the result of the fall. That's a result of the sin curse in the land. I had explained that to my grandson up in that. He said, why is God giving us a new, new uh, heaven and so on and so forth? Because in the new heaven, there won't be any more curse. Yes. Won't be any more sin. Right. And so we who have an understanding, now we're motivated by our compassion. Yes. We're motivated to teach. We go through new members class. We learn. We develop. We read our, our scriptures. We look at what the pastor gave. He gave instructions. That we're to read what this week to those who came forward? Romans 12. We read it how many times a day? Three. Three times a day. And then we become more uh, 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 acquainted with the Lord who's a just God. Yes, he is. You see that all in there, that he's a God of justice. And so now, uh, and so we're motivated now to, to, to not just come and just sit and see, but to make our life count. You know, and then become floaters, and from floaters, Sister Lisa, to teachers. We may be in the baby's class, and we learn all. We don't, we don't study just when it's our turn to teach. But we're motivated. We got a new place in the Lord. We're a new creation, and now he's developing us. He's changing us. What it say in Romans 12 that we're not conforming to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now we think like God thinks about things. And so now we're motivated. I'm going to make my life count. I'm going to give my tithes and offerings. I'm bringing it into the storehouse. I'm not taking it to raw six and to finish line. Foot locker. I'm going to make sure I, I'm giving the change, loose change, That's to the youth right. department because I want them to do neat things. I want them to have fun. I want them to be excited about Jesus. You teach it. A compassionate heart gives us motivation. Yes. Also, a, a compassionate heart, not only does it give us motivation, but it moves us. When you're motivated, you move. You know, you want to do. You know, you're just not talking about it. You are being about it. You know what I'm talking about? Let's look on with my next point. It's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a willingness to act. A willingness to act. Let's look at Acts, the book of Acts. And we're going to look down at verse 10. Chapter 10, excuse me. So we're going to look over at verse 38. Acts 10, 38. And it reads how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit uh -oh. and power. And how he went around doing good. Yeah. And healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. That's good. And this, this is really, 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 really good. Because we know people that are under the power of the devil. Not even just regular citizens of our country, but we see even governments. I see on the news how they have marijuana. And if you ever smoked marijuana or been around marijuana, you know what it looked like. And you know marijuana is dope. It's drugs. <laughs> And so now they try to, they're voting in Missouri. That's right. And they said that, okay, we want you to have recreational yep. marijuana. That's a high. Come on. And so we got enough people that's dumb and they're thinking not. We got enough people who don't want to work not. We got enough people that's lazy not. We got enough people that's involved in crime not. Now we want to put dope on. That's right. and, and see, the one thing about that is what that does is influence people who's on the line. Some people ain't have not ever been a dope smoker. Because that's what marijuana is. But now that the law said we can do a recreational, but girl, you know, give me old puff again. It makes you feel like, well, it ain't so bad if the government 
Or if the, 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 the county or if the city that you live in says, okay, it makes you almost let down your guard. Wicked. That's what it is. And so this is the influence that's going on in our world today. You got to watch influence. That's the same thing with the same sex stuff. You got to watch the culture is influencing people. People never even really want to do that, but because it's so everywhere. And now you become desensitized, and now all of a sudden, you say, okay, let me try it. Don't let you get hurt from one of these relationships. And so a mind is not strong, can be tempted in that area. And so therefore, we who are believers, we must be motivated, and it must come from a place of compassion to help others see clearly. How do you act when people are sick? Do you... Do you Step out in faith and say, let me pray for you. Yeah. Let's touch and agree about your body. Yeah. Or, oh, I'm going to be praying for you. When they tell you that, it should instantly motivate. I'm not going to pray later. I'm going to pray for you now. Right if there's a room for me to say a prayer for you now, I believe that the Lord said greater works than need shall I do. So I'm going to lay my hands on you in faith, believing that God is going to hear us and you're going to be here. Good. Action right here. Look at what I'm talking about here. Yeah. He said, and Jesus, God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went about doing good and healing all over under the power of the devil because God was with him. Yeah. That's good, we see people doing things wrong. You know, how do we respond? Do we say, Lord, touch their heart? Lord, Lord, show them yourself. Yeah. You know, when somebody's in a, in a deliber deliberating illness, do we say, Lord, remember her? Lord, remember the, her joint uh, fibromyalgia or whatever it is. You know, myalgia. Lord, remember her. Touch her. Touch this person. Touch that person. Do we release our faith? That's what a, a compassion in the heart, it motivates us. We're willing to act. What do you mean by being willing to act? Well, number one, to go tell them. Let them know what the Lord loves. What the Lord thinks. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16, it says, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. And this is something I learned about people that I once had a little riff with. Or they once did a little this to me, a little that to me. In the past, I don't regard them according to the flesh, no more. That's good, Pastor. That's real. This is what you got to give people a clean slate, Anaya. That's good. All the people that did you wrong, you got to give them a clean slate. All the little things you had controversy, you don't regard men according to the flesh. That's good. You look at them as someone that had have value and work. And so now you want to be on assignment as a kingdom representative to that person. You know, I, I notice how people compete with each other. In the world, you know, she don't dress better than me. You know, he, you know, he ain't as fly as I am. I'm super fly. He just fly, but I'm super fly. You know, some people have people that they have competed with. Y'all ain't gonna talk, but I'm gonna talk to y'all. Come on now. And so, when you get in Christ, you can't still measure them. Yeah. You know, her, that person's job don't pay as much as mine. My car is better than theirs. Come on. You know, my husband has someone than he is. That bubble head boy he got. You know, people have those type of mentalities. But you don't regard people according to the flesh. Amen. See, the Lord wants us to love our neighbor. Oh, man, this is important. Oh, yeah. You know, when a church is going out on the street and handing out invitations to the community, how do you act? You know, the people just need to come out. People ain't going to come unless we don't get the fish. Come on, Pastor. You know, we got to be willing to act. We got to be willing to leave our comfortable sanctuary. Yeah. Boy, that ass kicking in here today. Them seats is so soft. I almost didn't want to get up here and teach Bible stuff. But you got to be willing to act. You got to be willing to get your sweat rag out. Get your little personal fan and blow it on you in a bottle of water. We ain't going to be out there for an hour. We got to go and tell. Second thing is 
being willing to act is to care for them. Yeah. You know, it's no longer about me and mine, me, myself, and I. It's no longer about that. We got to care about people. We got to care about souls. When I got saved, Anaya Tana, I'm still the same cat. Yeah. What did I do when I got saved? Thank you for asking me. I wanted all my loved ones to know and love and follow yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I went on a sign and I went and told him, oh, you should have heard her. What is Bernard doing? <laughs> Who he think he is? <laughs> oh, now you, here you go with that holy in the house stuff. Oh, I've got it everywhere. Because persecution is on the, is, you know, it's on, it's, it's on the agenda for those who want to live uprightly. But I went on a sign, I went on a quest. Why don't you come to church? God loves you. Jesus saved. I'm saved now. I have salvation. I'm born again. Show me I'm born again. I'm seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And he loves you too. And the new life that he gave me, he wants to give you cuz, cuz, nephew, auntie, unk. Hey, unk. I'm with the Lord Jesus. I, you know, because I already knew the scripture to say if I'd be ashamed of him before me. Yeah, come on, come on, fast. He'd be ashamed of me. And I'd be ashamed. I went to Washington Hospital. That's where I met my wife. And I'd never get in that cafeteria. I've seen it the other day. In that cafeteria. And I went, look, this one. I love when they had burgers. <laughs> my nickname was Wendy. <laughs> but do you know? That I would be saying a quick prayer in front of you folks, saying a quick a shame blessing. That's right. But when I found the scripture, yeah. see how you go in the process? Yeah. When you know better, yeah. you didn't do that. Paul said, when I was a child, I act like a child. And when I got grown, I put away childish things. And so I found out ain't nothing wrong with prayer. Yeah. And if somebody got a problem with that, that's their problem. But I don't have a problem with talking to the Lord. Do you know some people don't do that? Somebody, some people don't even pray. But they want to tell you what the words say. They want to tell you what God does. They need to tell you what you need to be doing. But they ain't even read scripture. Walk in your lane. And so we have to, you know, even in, in, in acting, some of them, we got to tell them, man, you're going to have to read more Bible than what you I got a relative, I will tell you, but I can't do it. Because you know. I had to tell him he come to church every now and then, and then he want to tell me what I don't need to be saying to church. <laughs> I said, man, you need to read your Bible. <laughs> when are you going to read? Do you need some uh, uh, reading glasses? Can you read? Do you need me to read the scripture? Do you need me to get you some big, some, I got some, some DVDs of the scriptures and some CDs. <laughs> you need scripture, man. Yeah, come on now. But some people do not read scripture. Oh, it's sad. As much as we love, how I many here love the scripture? Come Raise your hand. Don't lie. Man, we love, but, but we're, you know, we're not the majority. The majority don't love the scripture. We love them. We want them to correct us. We want, them, want the scriptures to strengthen us. We want them, the scriptures to make us better. But some people don't. And if we're going to share, we're going to have to love our neighbor. They're both hard to love. And so we got to care for them. We got to work with them. We can't do them like we used to do in the world. See, God don't like us. You know, when they do something wrong, we try to figure out. You know, I remember when, you know, you know what he said, said, said crazy to me last week, and then look, all of a sudden this is happening to them. Folks would do that quick. They try to connect the dots. You know, uh, you know I know why that happened to them. You know, God don't like ugly. He ain't too fond of cute. Right. You can't put curses on people. You're supposed to bless people. You're supposed to say, Lord, I want you to bless them. I'm going to pray to God to bring you out of there. Come on over here and let's pray. Yeah. That's your opportunity. You got to care for people. Yeah, that's good, Pastor. It costs you to care for people. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, it does. And finally, after we go to them and care for them, we must do it as sacrificial generosity. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, the first thing it means is time. It's going to cost you some time. 
When you helping other people, it's not going to be instant. You may have to come back to them. How are you doing? Have you been reading any of the scriptures I sent you? How's your prayer life? You know, how's your how's your soul and spirit right now? Yes. Are you still angry? Some people are very angry. Yes, oh are. man, some people, man, they, they are rooting and tooting like Yosemite Sam. <laughs> and now they got these guns. They really don't know. The people telling you you can have open carry, but fire it if you want to. Just fire it in the air and let 911 catch you. You have so many charges on you and that you spend so much money, honey, you be crying for a plea deal. <laughs> Don't let these people trick you into thinking that you can walk around here with it strapped up on you and if somebody move, you wish they would. Because the minute you do so, they're going to they tell you, oh, no. The, 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 the state requirement, the city limits is for you not to do that. And then guess what? You're going to be in handcuffed. You know, I went out to the below, I went out to the, the fire range and I got all this stuff. But I thought I could do something to me. Just yeah. like that man, I want to get caught with it in your car. Come on, man. And tell you all you want to about we're going to change the legislation for recreational marijuana. And you get caught with it, guess what? Bust it. You can put the cuffs on you, give you a, if they don't take you away, they're going to put the, the, uh, the, they'll give you a piece of paper that says, got a coat day, not a court day, a coat day. I would have been sleepy all the time if they did a coat day. He goes to that mom and he got to go to coat. <laughs> it takes time. These people have been in sin all these times. You think you're going, what? That was my problem. I was going to the dope house. I was going to the Muslims. I was going everywhere because I had a sword and I was reckless with it. I was trying to get folks saved. But I didn't realize that I needed this down boy. Because they been sinning a long time before you met Jesus. And it's not going to be an instant transformation. Have you ever had something you was real hungry and you said, let me put this in the microwave at least for 15 seconds. <laughs> and then got some heat and you know, you had some satisfaction with that pizza, that wing. You had a couple wings. Barbecue ones. <laughs> and if you got it too hot, it would burn your tongue. <laughs> but some things you can't get real quick. You're going to have to let your light so shine. Yes. And it's going to be scenario after scenario after scenario that they're going to be to see a pattern of changing you. Because they remember when you was a low-down rascal yes, too. And so they're going to have to see change in you. Constant change. Yes. And then when they see constant change, they can say, well, you are the real deal. Right. You are all in. Because the whole time they've been looking at you, you still look the same. Their edges are still the same. <laughs> Skin complexion is still the same. They still think you're the same person. But they don't know, he's been renewing the inside. Yeah. They don't even know how God is. It's like a metamorphosis. It's like a butterfly. It's a change, Iris. And they don't see it. Yeah. And sometimes you got to let them know, hey, listen. The Lord is still working on me. That's right. I am not perfect. I'm on his potter's wheel. Right. And I just am a willing person to let him change me right. and renew me. That's what we're talking about. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. And so when you're talking about being compassionate and loving people, it's a sacrifice. It costs you. I talked about time. Ecclesiastes is your verse. Wow. Three, verse one. To everything, there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. That's right. A time. Yes. A time. And, and there's time when stuff happens, trauma, tragedy, circumstance, calamity, poverty, distress, where guess what? They looking for you. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're not careful, you can know you're supposed to call this person and check on them, and you can omit, and you had an opportunity. If you just showed up and sacrificially gave, that person could have really been strengthened in that hour. Yes. Yes. And so this is what the Lord has said. There's a time. There's a time. There's a moment. And it takes time to help people to develop. It takes process. It takes working with them. It takes encouraging them. It takes calling them and asking them, hey, how are you? That's good. That's good. That's good. How are you? That's it. You know, when we're having this, we got to go back to that. Just because now that we grow, I can't forget that some people, I do need to remind them. But man, you know where you need to be at on tomorrow at 9 o'clock Sunday school. <laughs> Come on, Rashley. You got to remember, you're in new members class. You got to remember, don't forget that. Yeah. I want you to put yourself in a position, in the pathway to be blessed. Yeah. See, what I got to say, I was touched by the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't know I had to call me. I was there before the preacher was there. Yeah. I'm out in the parking lot waiting on to open the gate. Damn. That's what happens when you really know the Lord and love Him. When you know it's not a game. But when you when you when you when it's a game, you know, you know, you, you like sometime. Fair weather. You know. And I had blessed blocker, joy, stillers, peace, robbers, and everything against me in church. And guess what? I was like, I'm not going nowhere. Hallelujah. I'm getting them all. This is how. I ain't worried about you. I got old people real quick. Real quick. They told me you can't sing back. I remember Brother Crawford can't sing. <laughs> A living testimony. <laughs> Could have been dead and gone. I was singing that song by the Williams Brothers. Lord, you let me live on. I was singing it the whole church. I was like, but I had some people who rolled their eyes and started rolling their eyes with a top rolling. I let them jump and throw me off my square. I'm standing on the rock. Come on, baby. I've been around backstabbers all my life. <laughs> Why would I think I could go in the Lord's house and there ain't going to be a few there? The Lord had to help me with that. When they chose me to be on the deacon board, we went way out to one of them breakfast restaurants. The deacons went to breakfast. And everybody talked about this one deacon. They was whispering to me, don't put a pay him no attention. He ended up being the better of the bunch. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I went in a prayer. I said, Lord, why is the division here? And he said these words, well, I can understand. He gave me a parable. He said, even the Jackson 5 broke up. And they was brothers. Dancing, dancing, dancing. He's a dancing machine. Well, I love that. Boy, well, I love that coming up. Y'all might not love y'all. Y'all might be secret Michael Jackson fans. And all this is 40 and up over here. It's 40 and up. It's up there. It's 20 year old. You're 20 yet? Come on. 19. How are you? 20. Barry. <laughs> just the county just flips. <laughs> but I mean, when he, when he let me know that, I said, I get it. He didn't let me know how the disciples were talking about which one of us is going to be the greatest. Yeah. But he let me know what I can relate to with the Jackson Five. Yeah. I said, okay, yeah. God, I did. But that's why you got to follow Jesus without looking around. Yeah. You better set your face focused, honey. Yeah. Because you can look around, you can get distracted. Yeah. That's a good, Pastor. Yeah. Wow. Walk in wow. your path. Come on, man. It takes time. And sacrificial generosity, it takes effort. Can somebody say that with me? Effort? Effort. It takes effort. Effort. Yes. Ephesians 5, verse 16. Here's your scripture. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Some verses is redeeming the time because the days are evil. That means you make every, the most of every opportunity. You make it count. You seize the moment. You know, sometimes you got to go down in humility. You got to become vulnerable. You got to be a man. I know you heard right now, man. But we with you. And God is with you. Sometimes it's not to say anything. People are hurting. 
Let people, let them talk. That's good, yeah. You just be there to listen. Yeah. They thirsty or something. You hungry? Okay, they both make sure. That's all you say. Yeah. You know, and I learned that. When people grieving, you don't go to your whole uh, concordance. That's good, Pastor. That's real. No. You don't give them nothing but your love. That's your support. And so this is what, 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 when you talk about sacrificial generosity, you have to make effort. Yeah. You got to make the call. Yeah. You can't just assume, oh, they'll be all right, I pray for them. No. Right. <laughs> you got to make the effort. That's you going to have to do. Yeah. That's real good. And lastly, as sacrificial generosity, money. Yeah. yeah. Money. Yeah. Money. You know, we can get to a point to where we limit our giving. Mm -hmm. I gave him my tithes, I gave my offer, I gave the good fund, I even gave him kids and his child. But when the person down the street asks you for something, yeah. Yeah. money is a tool. That's it. Money is a That's tool. It. And it's not for us to stockpile, That's even it. though you need to be to get your hands on something. Yeah, come on now. But it's a tool that you use. And, and some people do it all the time. They'll buy that person's dinner. Yeah, you're right. You know, could have just cut them off on their way to any red lobster. And you went in there and you'd have paid their $56 meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, man, you paid them on me? Yeah, man. The Lord just put it on my heart. The Lord Jesus just put it on my heart. That's a blessing. And they like scratching their head. And they ain't never gave nobody nothing. They better take it. They steal. They do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> But to see you in action. Yeah, that's good. Come on. And so, so this is the scripture. Luke 630. Give to everyone who asks you. This is mess somebody's theology up right there. Right there, they go. I'm not giving them people to work just like me. Oh, yeah. Look at that man's strong muscles on him. He ain't taking my money and going to give him a, 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 a hit of whiskey. He's not going to do that. The devil is a liar. That ain't the Lord. Help me, God. <laughs> <laughs> Man, boy, you me. <laughs> he said, Jesus said in that scripture, give to everyone who asks. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's when good. I found that out, and I'm acquainted with another one that talks about that too. When I found that out, I said, I gotta stop this rhythm of roar. I'm my own. When people ask if I can give, I need to put something in their hand. Somebody might say, give me $30. I might not give you 30 I might give you 40 If the Lord lead me to do it. I try to be sensitive to the Spirit. See, even in the church, God can take us through a process. But we stick, we tight lip. We don't know, man. We give that little old 40 the Lord and send a $400 check. Yeah, come on, man. Blew you out. Blew you out. And you was, yeah. your whole, you scratching your, your braids over that 40 all week. And you gave, and the Lord just said, here, child. Here, child. Here. I'll get it to you. Jesus said, give everyone who asks you. And so, one thing about people, people who need, who need the Lord, who need Jesus, need someone that has Jesus. People who need Jesus, need somebody who has Jesus. All these years we've been sitting up in the house of the Lord, we need to have fruit like the Lord. Every time somebody's sick, you got to remember what Acts 10 said. Jesus went around doing good. And you need to get into action. Let me pray. Yeah. Let me let you stand on this scripture here. All sickness is not of the devil, but that the glory of God may be revealed. If you don't have enough of that scripture right there, yeah. you have that one with sick people. Yeah. And every time you stand on that one, Somebody asks you for some, some money, you can have a scripture. Well, you, we, don't, we, don't, we don't give you something to eat. We're going to make sure your kids got something to eat. We've got to go to all these and get it. We're going to get it. 
But I want you to know, you seek first God's kingdom, Matthew 6, 33 says, and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. So don't just talk the Bible and act. Get in the act. This is what loving that neighbor is about. Ask yourself. You ain't gonna get nobody no old piece of chicken in the refrigerator needs to be threw out last two weeks ago. Get them them ribs in there you got. Give them two of them ribs. A piece of that cornbread, that macaron. Make them smile when they eat. They're like, thank you. <laughs> I'm making it humorous, but this is what we have to have a mindset in these days because we're in perilous times. Perilous. We're in times when people are homeless, people are everywhere, and you have to, you know, you know, you can be overwhelmed because it is so many. And so therefore, you have to shift to the spirit and go into the place of an intercessor with people. Yeah. When you see people, Lord, touch her. You know, and whatever it is on your heart to pray for her, in faith you pray for her. Yeah. You never know when you get to heaven, there's going to be people that you saw and never knew but intercede for. They, the Lord going to bring them forward. Remember it. on this day, 10, 20, 1974, you prayed for this child here. Do it. Your prayers help them. He said God's eyes are over the righteous and his ears are attentive to their requests. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Right. And so now that we've been redeemed, we need to act like it. Amen. We yeah. need to share. And we need to love our neighbor. Let's stand to our feet.